Welcome back to the Hot 790 News. Thank you for staying with us. The Grenada government has launched an investigation into the citizenship by investment company that was expected to construct and establish a shrimp farm in St. Mark since 2017. In February 2017, a CBI registered company called Grenada Sustainable Aquaculture launched the Zero Water Exchange Sustainable Organic Shrimp Farm. The project was expected to specialize in the production of shrimp in a socially and environmentally friendly manner that is free of antibiotics, chemical additives, and enzymes. The farm was to be operated out of Bocage, St. Mark. It was announced on Tuesday that the government is seeking regional and international support to deal with the proprietors of the project who have collected significant sums from the program. Following this predicament, the Grenadian government will also change the conditions of people receiving money from the CBI program by making sure it goes into an escrow account and that they have an account for it and that they have to account for it on a regular basis with the government having oversight. Grenada earned more than EC $80 million through the CBI program in 2018 and recently made legislative changes to the CBI law. Justifying the purpose of the changes, the Prime Minister said the aim is to attract more persons. One Cicero driver says he will no longer be quiet on an issue that is greatly impacting his daily operations. Alexis Alexander, who is the PRO of the Cicero Minibus Drivers Association, says transport officials need to figure out a workable solution to the number of permit holders and the space allocated for parking. He says the area does not provide adequate accommodation for drivers. It's my problem, it's the rest of the drivers on our bus stand. Problem. But they will not talk about it, but I'm straightforward enough to talk about it. I was not at work yesterday. I understood the officer came here and asked bus drivers to remove their bus on the sidewalk. I understand the bus is not supposed to be on the sidewalk for true. We're not supposed to block traffic. But what I'm saying is, if the state give 70 permits, 70, 70 permit out there, they're supposed to give 70 parking lots for these vehicles to operate. That's the problem I have with the Department of Motor Vehicle, which is DMV. Y'all cannot do us that. So y'all ask us to burn more fuel. Which, when we burn more fuel, the state make more money. Any traffic jam, anytime you're just driving around, they make more money on fuel, which fuel price is already raised. That's unfair to us. He says drivers have tried unsuccessfully to implement measures to address the situation. According to him, drivers still find themselves circling the city, waiting for a free spot, causing disruptions in traffic that have a ripple effect on the entire motoring public. We decide to do a rotation, the rotation we decide for our benefit, because we consider we're wasting time and we still don't have enough parking lot. So that's what I want Department of Motor Vehicle to see about. That was the PRO of the Cicero Minibus Association, Alexis Alexander. Millions of people are hurt or killed by injuries every year due to inadequate response or lack of timely assistance. Taking immediate action and applying the appropriate techniques while waiting for professional help can considerably reduce deaths and injuries and the impact of disasters and everyday emergencies. The Red Cross, with these factors in mind, has embarked on a three-day workshop aimed at assisting communities with emergency response. Tresha Lionel tells us more. It has been said that first aid training should be given to every person at all stages of their life, at home, in school, at the workplace. The St. Lucia Red Cross has taken this to heart. Red Cross volunteers formed part of the community-based health and first aid workshop, which started on Tuesday. The whole objective of this training is to raise our volunteers skills and knowledge in how they can contribute to making their communities healthier. So everybody in the room is a community-based volunteer. They are either a leader or a floor member within their, within their branch. And coming out of this, we are hoping that they can go back into their communities and to execute the, the knowledge that they have learned, the skills that they can contribute to improving the health of their communities. It's important for us to capitalize on the fact that Red Cross volunteers are a link in their communities and they are a link to healthier communities. And if we can 
promote that and help them to do it by providing them with the necessary skills and knowledge, then it means that we ourselves as a national society have also made our um, contribution to making St. Lucia and our communities in St. Lucia a healthier place. Several activities and several training sessions were held during the three-day exercise. It involves a lot of hands-on, including field assignments, so they'll be going out into the field, you're doing the education, the practices within house, and then they go out to actually practice under supervision. The St. Lucia Red Cross was founded in 1949 as a branch of the British Red Cross and became a society of its own in 1983. I am Tresha Lionel for Hot 7 News. Furniture Store Courts has launched its Ready Finance Microloan Program, which is specifically aimed at entrepreneurs and small and medium-sized businesses. The company notes that although the business of lending money is a risky one, its continued efforts to building the capacity of the nation is security enough to go through this venture. Solange Alfred reports. Courts is bringing to St. Lucia their Ready Finance for small to medium-sized enterprises. The product, dubbed MicroPlans, was launched on Wednesday, 14th March, at their branch in the JQ Mall. The launch hosted a number of notable entrepreneurs looking to garner information on Court's newest offer. Brand manager of Unicoma OECS, Kenin Betty, says that the business looks to offer its services where it has realized that a challenge exists with financing for local small entrepreneurs. We have recognized that in St. Lucia, a lot of people who are entrepreneurs, a lot of small business owners, have had difficulties getting financing, especially for those who are startup. And so for that reason, we are today launching our microloans, and we are very hopeful that a lot of St. Lucians will actually take the uh, opportunity to apply for these loans, as we think that it's a very good initiative towards economic development. According to Betty, Though the business of financial lending is an uncertain one, Courts stands ready to offer these business owners a fair chance at growth and development of their endeavors through adequate training. There's always a risk in everything that you do, and so of course we understand it's a risky market, um, but what we have found is that a lot of small business owners, their challenge is not being able to have access to financing and not being able to finance their goals. And so it's not necessarily that they don't have good ideas, it's just that they don't have the necessary finances, and that's how we're trying to provide this. In addition to providing the financing, we will also ensure that we give them the training that's needed to ensure that they develop and that they grow. That's a very important component of what we're offering today. Entrepreneurs can take advantage of the no deposit, customizable payment terms, and payment protection offered by Courts Ready Finance Microplans. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solesh Alfred. Thank you very much, Solaj. You're watching the Hot 7 Nightly News. Up next, sports news with Tennyson Glasgow.